the word of God says that in blessing that I will bless and so in blessing I bless you sir I bless you sir I bless you sir I bless you sir this, this brother was in the hospital just the other day y'all and this is his first time he says he's gonna be in the house of the Lord I bless you sir man of God I bless you sir man of God I bless you young man I bless you young man I bless you sir man of God oh my God over here I bless you these are my sons you all and, and, and they know how to get to my heart that's why before I even came up I had to go over there and give each of them a, a fist bump I bless you son I bless you son I love you son I bless you I love you Isaac I bless you I love you gentlemen I love each and every one of you all let's go before the Lord in prayer can we do that Father God Lord in the name of Jesus oh God you've instructed me you've instructed me to bless them so this morning oh God I ask you to seal that prayer seal that blessing oh Lord God upon each and every one of their lives that they would never be the same again, oh God. Jesus. Father God, that this would be, oh Lord God, the start of a new season. My Lord. A new season in their lives. A season of health, Lord God. A season of prosperity, Lord God. A season of new possibilities, Lord God. A season, Father, where you will speak to them. Father, you would give the, the, the young men, oh Lord God, visions, oh God, and you would give the, 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 the older men dreams, Lord God. Father, I thank you right now for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you right now, Lord God, because Father God, you have, you have done a new thing, oh God, and there, you have chosen them. I didn't even know who were going to be here this morning, Lord God, but you chose them. And so, Father, I ask you, Lord God, in the anointing of the man of God, in the anointing, Lord God, in the authority upon my life, touch each and every one, Lord God. Speak to each and every one, Lord God. You said that my sheep hear my voice. So, Father, speak to them, Lord God. Right, right now, right now, right this minute, Lord God. It's not about a program, Lord God. Right now, speak to them, Lord God. Father, they have burdens to carry. They have families, Lord God. They have plans, Lord God. Some of them don't know how they're going to do it, Lord God. But Father God, we know that in you, they will be successful. So Father, I bless my sons in the ministry, Lord God. I bless each and every one of them. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. If you receive that, just let's give the Lord a hand clap. Let's give the Lord a praise. God is so good. He is so good. He is so good. You may be seated. Oh my God. You're a man. You're the man. You're the man. Mm. You're the man. You are the man. You are the man, sir. You are the man. You know, one of the things that men do is that they show up. They give their word and they keep their word. You are the man. Sir, you are the man. Receive. Amen. Y'all, all, all you got to do is receive. receive. When God bestows something on you, all you got to do is receive it. Right. Amen. There are some of you all that's watching by social media. God bless you. Receive. You are the man. Yes. I got two young men back there. They need to know. You know, there, there, there's this phase in a young man's life when, 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 when they become victims. Victims of, of things. Victims. So I need them to know this morning. The world is waiting for the gift on the inside of you all. You are the man. You are the man. Sir. You are the man. My cameraman. I gotta bestow a blessing upon him. And blessing everybody. I didn't bless my cameraman. What kind of what, what you know I can't I can't this man stands by my side, you all. He's been in my family for a good minute. I gotta say something. 
As one of my associate ministers, Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you. you are the man. God bless you. May God bless you. May God prosper you. May you see a new season of blessing upon your life. A new season of health. Certain things that used to happen, I decree that right now, that you will not see them anymore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This brother, he experiences it. At times, he gets a little dizzy, and he, I forgot what they call that, uh, when he gets it, and, and then vertical. vertical, thank you. But I'm believing God yeah. that that vertical will be a thing of the past. Yeah. That the yeah. Lord will bless you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking it. This, was, this wasn't even planned. This is the Lord telling me to tell you. It's over. That that vertical is over. Yeah. Yeah. That vertical is over in your life, sir. That vertical is over in your life. So God bless you, you were the man. So over here, my godson, I didn't bless you either. So you know you gotta get blessed, man. I can't, I can't, I can't move on without blessing you, man. You know, sometimes the last one is always the best one, man. Huh? Huh? You, you, you gotta come out here, man. You, you gotta come out. This, this, this. See, see, with you all with social, this social distancing and all that kind of good stuff. You know, I ain't gonna come out. I'm not gonna touch y'all. I ain't gonna put oil on y'all. But this is my godson, y'all. This is my godson. His name is Caleb. He has a different spirit. Okay. When, when, when the spies were sent out, and what, 99 of them came back and said one thing. And Caleb said a different thing. So Caleb had a, had a different spirit. Amen. I believe in God that, Father, right now I bless Caleb, O oh Lord God, with the anointing, Father, that is upon Caleb's life, O oh Lord God, that's upon his namesake, Lord God. Father God, I, I declare, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, blessings upon Caleb's life, Lord God. Father, it was a miracle that he was even born. So right now, Lord God, place a fresh, fresh, fresh coal upon his lips, Lord God. Yes, Father, that he would begin to speak the oracles of God yes. from his youth, Lord God. Anoint his hands, Lord God. Touch his mind, O oh Lord God, and his lips, Father. I thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, he, he, I, I, I love this guy because as I'm as I'm holding on to him, he's holding on to me. And as I let him go, he's holding me. He's holding me. He is holding me, you all. And that's how it should be with us and God. That's exactly how it should be with us and God. We should be holding on to God. Y'all see that? When I let go, I'm still holding on. We should be holding on to God. Huh? A lot of times we, we, we don't know how to do it on our own. We don't know how to solve things on our own. Yeah. Take it to God. Amen. Hold on to the hold it. Hold on to those promises. God, I'm holding you. I'm holding you accountable, God. I'm holding on to your promises. Thank you, Caleb. Amen. I love you. Oh my God. Oh, let's give my let's give my God a hand, y'all. Oh my God. This wasn't even planned. The sleep wasn't even planned, you all. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Before I go, I gotta also bestow a blessing upon Caleb, you all. I'm sorry, upon um, Zion, you all. Zion is a male and he's in the house. Amen. So just bear with me. Give me a moment. If there's any other males, if there's anybody that I missed, Amen. We got. Come on now. We gotta. We gotta bestow blessings. You know, he's here, right? I don't know when he's gonna be back. So, so I'm gonna bestow the blessing today. He, he's gonna get the blessing today. Say today. Amen. Father, what's his name? Hunter. Hunter. I like that name. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I bestow blessings upon Hunter right now, Lord God. Father, give him the strength of his name's sake, Lord God. Father, let him be let him be in pursuit of you, O oh God. Father God, let him serve you, Lord God, from his youth, O oh God. And Father, I speak and decree blessings, O oh Lord God. Father God, that he will be able, O oh Lord God, to, to Lord God, to go against. To see things, oh Lord God, to see a need, Lord God. The world needs the anointing that's upon his life. 
And so I thank you right now for what you're going to do yes. in Hunter's life, Lord God. God. The doors that you're going to open for Hunter, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to do Zion, you all, and then we're going to get to our word. Amen. Oh, my God. We got two more. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what y'all got to do. Y'all begin to hold them up. Hold them young men up because they need blessings. They need blessings. Amen. Yes. I want to, I want to, I want to bless, I want to bless Ezekiel right now in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel is the young man back there by the camera. You all just extend your hands. Um, we, oh, we got babies. We got babies back there. Hold them, hold them babies. Sister Gertrude got babies. Yes, yes. Men deserve this. Let's stand up. Man, you all are the one. You all can bestow blessings now. So now you all gonna help me bless these young men. Yes, you all extend your hands. Bless Lord. Bless Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless Lord. And just let's tell all of us. Say, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we bless these young men in the name of Jesus. Each and every one of them. Each and every one of them, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. Father, that your hand is upon them, O oh God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for the blessing upon their lives. We thank you, Lord God, that they will not serve the enemy not one day of their lives. That they will not repeat the mistakes that I made, Lord God. That their fathers made, that their uncles made, O oh Lord God. But doors will be open for them in their youth, O oh Lord God. And that you would bless them. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. My God. Amen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all being blessed? Yes. Yes. Man, I'm being blessed. You know, as as every as as the teams were ministering, I was, you know, I was there and I was, I'm trying to be good. I'm I'm trying to be good. And you know, but the tears are falling. I take off my glasses and I'm trying to be good. And I'm like, but somebody gotta preach. I wanna get ugly. I wanna just get down on the floor. I wanna just worship God and toward the end. I didn't I had no choice but to like, God, I'm gonna give you the glory. See, see, some of you all don't know how good God been in my life. Some of you all don't know where God has brought me from. But I know. I know where God has brought me from. I know how God has made a way out of no way for me. I know how God has blessed me. And so it's so important for me to forget about the suit, forget about the this, but go to God with worship. Amen. So come on now. So, so men, the men in here say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the men in here say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Gentlemen, I'm honored to be in you all's company. I am truly honored to be in you all's company. Let me tell you all that. This morning, I that that was not even something that I planned on doing. I, I just want to say Happy Father's Day again to, to, to those of you all that's here, those of you all that's watching by way of social media, whether you're father, grandfather, godfather, surrogate father, stepfather, you know, it don't matter. You know, we, we wish each and every one of you all a, a happy Father's Day. You know, it, it, it says that it says that when you teach your children, you teach their children. When you teach your children, you teach their children. Billy Graham, Pastor Billy Graham says a good father is one that is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, but yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. Yeah most valuable assets in our society. A good father. That's what it says. A good father. A good father. So let's see what we're going to do this morning. We're going we to we see where God wants to take us because we use up a lot of our time and so we go. going God wants to do something different. I'm going to give you all the end of my message and the end of my message is uh, you know if I had if Yesterday I ministered uh, a, a, a sermon, and if, that, if I could call it anything, it would be called uh, Parting Shot. And um, it's things that a father would tell a young man, that would tell his son, you know, if it was his last time speaking to them. There are two men in the Bible who it was their last time being spoken to by their leader, by their father. In one case, it was David, David's father. Uh, I'm sorry, David was speaking to Solomon, and David wanted to give Solomon some instructions before he passed. 
uh, um, Moses, Moses wanted to speak to uh, Joshua and Moses wanted to give him instructions before he, because they were, that, that was a part of, 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 of a portion of the journey where the people were going to go up into the promised land, but he couldn't go with them. Okay, so he had to do what was right in God's eyes, what God had told him to do. And so he had to uh, 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 bless the brother and give him some parting words. So this morning we're going to take a look at, uh, we'll take a look at, at 2 Kings. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. I don't know if I prayed for it. Let me pray. I, I've learned... I've learned by doing things around here. I've learned by trying to fix things in the church, trying to do things at home, trying to do things at my job. And there are times I come to a place where I don't know what to do. So I'm being I'm, I'm being transparent, transparent to you all. So you pray. That's my secret. That's my secret, you all. I pray. Y'all heard me? I pray. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Right now, oh God, I thank you, I praise you, I bless your word. Father, I humble myself right now, oh God, as your man of God, that you may speak to me, Lord God. You told me to bless them, and I was obedient, Father. So right now, Lord God, I ask you to speak to me, oh Lord God. Lead me and guide me in this moment and in this season, oh Lord God. Father, that in blessing, oh Lord God, in blessing, Lord God, that you would bless me, that you would grant me entrance into your word. And so I thank you, Lord God. I praise you. I give you thanks, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, I, you know, as I, as I think about our fathers this morning, you know, fathers, you, you all are, uh, you all are, are, are just so amazing, but, but I, I, I got to tell you, you know, as a father, you all face many, many challenges in life. You know, a lot of, we, we, we know our fathers as our protector. We know our fathers as our provider. We know our fathers as the head of the household. But the protector, it, 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 that means you have to confront adversaries. That means that you have to defend the honor of your, of your wife or your daughter. That means sometimes you have to be confrontational. So it takes a whole lot of courage to be that protector. Amen? When you hear movement in the house at night, that means you get up. Huh? As, as, as providers, that means you're on your grind. You know, you don't have the luxury of chilling. You know, you have to get up in the morning, you have to make it happen, Captain. That's what my brother-in-law would always tell me. Make it happen, Captain. When things get, you know, when things need to get fixed, you have to be the one to step up and to go and do it. Whether or not you do it or you get it done. So let me tell you all something. Some of you all were here the last time when, when, uh, when we were in church. And so uh, we had an issue with the air conditioner on this side. And uh, the air conditioners have like a protective covering around it. And uh, so I had fear of heights. Uh, so... Uh, it, I'll go up to a certain level, okay? But after that, I'm like, you know, it, things begin to... Amen. Begin to... Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Once my dad called, openly called me a chicken in front of my wife. That was very degrading. I had to go and cut something at, at the house. And we, it was after a hurricane or something like that. And uh, so um, I'm, I'm going up the ladder and I have the chainsaw in my hand and I'm trying to do it nice and gently and neat and slow. And, uh, and, and my dad said, he notices that I'm afraid. So he said, oh, come down, you're a chicken. And so I came, came down. He climbed up. And this was in his 70s, you all. He climbed up with the, with, the, uh, with the chainsaw in his hand, went up, and he was just cutting, 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 cutting. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, please protect this, this man. Because I'm concerned he may cut the branch that he's leaning on. But anyhow, he didn't. He knew exactly what he was doing. I was the one that was a little fearful. So at any rate, the, the, the brother, while he's working on the AC, he says, hey, I need you to come up and, and come and assist me. I need you to remove the protective covering. And I'm like, okay, Lord. Uh, and I'm looking at the height of this building, and I'm like, okay, so I know that uh, just, oh, 
just the day before, uh, I had to go on the on the roof of my daughter's house to go and help them uh, with their eight seat. And so what I did it was a two story. I was able to go on the second, I'm sorry, the first story, on top of the first story, comfortably. But when it was time to climb the second story, I was like, okay, I'm challenged here. I'm challenged. So the brother, he says, uh, the, the repair technician, he says, hey, I need your help. So uh, I noticed another brother that had recently uh, was on the AC. And so I decided that, okay, you know what? I would call him and I would ask him to do it. And so later on, you know, I went on ahead and I gave him something for his, uh, for his assistance. And so, so ladies, let me tell you all something. Your man, if he gets it done, that's all that matters. Aren't y'all cool today, right? Y'all are fine, right? So the pastor that was afraid of heights, he just got somebody else to do it. So, so you don't have to always do it yourself, guys. You all are meddling with me this morning. All right, let's go. Let's keep it going. You know, as 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 I prepared this this message, uh, I wanted I wanted to just share something with with the men because I, I saw something. The Lord dropped on me a revelation, and it's a revelation that that a lot of times we don't we don't we really really don't see. And uh, in Genesis, the first chapter, the twenty seven and twenty eight verse, Genesis twenty seven, Genesis one twenty seven and twenty eight, and these are simple. It's a simple revelation. The thing that moves me, the thing that drives my life are the simple revelations that God gives me. And I can hold on to them. I guess God is saying, this, this man, let me, let me keep it simple for him. Let me keep it simple for this guy. So it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Watch this now. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and what? And subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So watch this now. Now, it, it's so interesting, right? It's so interesting. So God blessed woman and she was able to conceive and do exactly what God told her to do. But God also blessed man and told man, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And so you wonder, why is it that man, God told man to do all of this and to do this and to do that? It's because he put the ability on the inside of man to do it. He spoke to woman and woman had the ability on the inside of her to reproduce. He spoke to man and he put the ability on the inside of man. I know that gentlemen many times it's hard being house, head of household. It's hard being husbands. It's hard being, you know, doing some of the things that, that we have to do. We got married and you know, we got families and we're not given a, an instructions manual. And some things were really, really difficult for us. But I want you to know that you have the ability. Don't miss that. You have the ability on the inside. If you don't walk out of here with nothing, you better walk out of here saying, say, hey, one, I got blessed. And two, I got the ability on the inside of me to do this. To do what? Whatever it is that you want to do. I have the ability on the inside of me to be the man. Amen? You have the ability on the inside of you. And so I don't want you to miss that this morning. Don't miss that. I want to, I want to, I, I spoke to you regarding the words of David, King David, to his son, Solomon. Solomon ended up becoming one of the most wisest men and, and he, I want to go to 1 Kings, the second chapter, the first through the third verse. 1 Kings, the second chapter. God is speaking this morning. You have the ability. Could you say, I have the ability. I have the ability. Amen. I didn't give it to you all. God gave it to you. Amen. You know, I issued the blessing, but God gave you the ability. Come on, come on. I issued the blessing, Amen. but God gave you all the ability. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. So in 1 Kings... Now, now, 
uh, it reads, Now in the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon, his son, saying, let's see what he told him. I go in the way of all the earth. Everybody, to everybody, it's appointed to us one day that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be born and one day you're gonna die. As a matter of fact, the Bible only records one person that didn't die. Even Jesus. Jesus had to, had to amen? The only person was uh, uh, Enoch. Enoch walked with God. And the Bible says that one day he was not. They were walking and walking and walking and walking and they walked up into glory. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. All right. Yes. All right. So I go the way of all the earth. And so he tells them, be strong and therefore, say that last part with me, and prove yourself a man. There are times that my dad used to tell me, my dad used to say, uh, you know, there, there are certain things I want to tell you, but I can't tell you now. There are certain things I want to tell you, but I can't tell you now. Then all of a sudden I noticed he stopped saying that. He just started, he would just say it. He would just say it. And so I get, and, and, and so I put two and two together. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess now I'm a man. <laughs> so this morning, he, he tells him, he says, prove yourself. Prove yourself. See, I know you the man, but you have to prove to yourself that you the man. Remember, remember, I told you all that, he, that, that, that the ability is where? It's hidden on the inside of you, right? But see, you don't know it until you done tried something and then you're like, oh, I could do this thing. I could jump. I could whatever. Y'all got me? Yes. Prove yourself a man. Prove yourself. Prove yourself. Prove yourself. Huh? Prove yourself, sir. Prove yourself. Because I don't call it. You know what's so amazing, right? God, 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 God speaks, and God looks back, and he saw. God speaks, and he saw. God still spoke it, and when he looked back, and he said, everything, it was good. It was good. Whatever he said, it was good. So God has put an ability on the inside of you that's good. Amen. Amen. I hope somebody got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was good. That's good. There we go. Next verse. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, watch this now, that you may prosper in all that you do and then wherever you turn. So remember, so David he is king. He reigned as king for 35, for, for, I'm sorry, for 40 years. He reigned as king for 40 years over Israel. And what's so interesting, did he make mistakes? Yeah, he made mistakes. Did he do things that he, he, he probably he should listen, to, he listened to folks that he probably shouldn't have? Maybe he should have consulted God at times when he didn't, and so on and so forth. But when he looked back over his life, you know, at my point that right now, and I'm, I'm not afraid, afraid to say it, right now I'm 55, and when I look back over my life, when I look back at some of my, my mistakes, my and when I look back, my God. I know some that there were areas where I went wrong. Right. I know that there were some of the mistakes that I made. And so if today was the last day that I could speak, I would speak to my sons and I would tell them, hey, don't do this. Don't do that. Can I tell you all one thing? So I see some, uh, most of you all in here are younger than me, okay? Amen. Younger than I am. Okay, so I've been married now for 30, 31 years with my wife. Okay, I almost messed up. Oh, she's there. Uh, all right. See? Because with women, you got to get it right, right? Sometimes when, when folks ask, you know, how long have y'all been married? And, and, and she, she's silent. She knows the number, right? She can just say it like that. But she, a lot of times she's silent to, to see if I would get it right. I'm with you, Pastor. With thank you. Thank you. Because sometimes I need to have somebody with me on this ledge. <laughs> Oh my God. If there's one thing that I can tell you all, brothers, is that hang in there. 
in you all's marriages. Mm. Hang in there in you all's relationships. Mm. One of the things that I thank God that my dad did. My dad came up during a time when things were kind of hard on men and, 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 and uh, they were, a lot of the men in that generation, dad is 88, a lot of the men in that generation would, would, would all of a sudden leave their, their families and, and go in and, 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 you know, disappear. They just wouldn't come home, you know? And, you know, back then they didn't have a lot of the, the social uh, laws and, you know, things like that. And, you know, Jan and Reno, the, you know, to put child support on you and go and so on and so forth. I, and so, uh, but I saw some of my, some of the men, my dad's friends left their families and I got a chance to see what happened to those families. Some of my cousins and my friends and I got a chance to see the girls that got pregnant out of wedlock. The young men that went to jail because they didn't have any guidance, you know. But then I had a person that kept telling me, hey, when I get home, make sure you're home. When I get home, you better do your homework. When I get home, so so these things they gave me, they gave me guidance. They gave me bookends. They they allowed me, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have the freedom to do certain things. And so the thing that I thank God for is that my dad stayed in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of the hardships. My dad stayed. So guys, they never think about. Well, when they leave, well, what about, how am I going to look my kids in the eye later on? Because they're going to grow up one day. Mm -hmm. How am I going to look my kids in the eye and say, well, you know, I, I abandoned you because of this, or I abandoned you because of that. So guys, the one thing that I can tell you all about, I won't tell you anything, is to hang in there. Hang in there. Yeah. Stay with your wives. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's move on. Uh, there was something else that he told... Um, there was something else that he told his son, and that's in verse 7. Verse 7 is, we're going to do 1 uh, Kings, the second chapter, and verse 7. He says, but show kindness. Show kindness. And he, he, he says, show kindness, and I'm not going to trip over that word, you all. The Gilead, uh, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table, for so they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your father. When I did things, they helped me out. So, you know, show kindness to them. And I want to tell you all that that's, a, that that's another thing that he told them. Show kindness. Because you never know. You being kind to people, you know, kindness begets kindness. Right. So he told them, he said, walk in the Lord. Do what God told you to do and be kind to people. Mm -hmm. The greatest lessons that I've learned in my life came from men that, uh, that, 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 that were kind to me. My first car that I was given, I went to go and help a brother out. Just help a brother put a transmission in a car, you all. But little that I knew was that he was going to be retiring probably within a week or two. And so he decided that, ah, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this and I'm going to buy myself another car. Well, we put in the transmission, it worked, it worked great. But guess what he did with the car? He gave it to me. That became my first car, his kindness. So I learned a lot from that brother. He wasn't a CEO, he wasn't a this or that. The brother was a, was a custodian, a janitor at a, at a school, but he had a whole lot of strength and a whole lot of wisdom and God used his heart, amen? I learned something from a, uh, from a librarian and she, all she was, she was just kind to us. And you know what she taught me? That the answer to a lot of the things that you're going through are in some of the reference books in the back of the library. Those yellow books, the books with the yellow pages that nobody goes and read, nobody wants to ask about those. And that's what she taught me. She took interest in me and my sister Eden. I learned some other things from, from, from other people. And it's amazing, I go to the bank the other day and there's this lady that's there and everybody's really, really frustrated about the lines and banks. Uh, and so I go to this particular teller and she sees the name of the church. My wife normally goes there uh, and, and to transact on behalf of the church. She sees the name of the church and the first thing she asked me was, what happened to that kind, that really, really kind lady that always comes here? And I found it so interesting that my wife's kindness would, try, would cause, would leave such an indelible mark on that, lazy, uh, on that lady's psyche that she would remember her as that kind lady from that church. 
Could you imagine what it would be if, what the message would be if once she knew that it was a church and two, my wife was not kind? Those are church people. <laughs> yep, you all can fill in the blank. <laughs> all right, all right. So let, 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 let's keep it going. I want you, I want you to know this morning that 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 it's it's so important that that you understand uh, what we're saying regarding the, the 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 simple charge that's upon the word when the word says to honor your father and your mother. Listen, that, that's the end. I'm gonna end right there. To honor your father and your mother. To honor your father and your mother. You know, it's so easy for us to uh, for us to, to to honor our moms. We came out of our moms. We had experiences with our moms. And a lot of times when you were told to honor our mothers and our fathers, the first thing we think of, well, well, well does he deserve it? That's right. Well, does he deserve it? Well, the Bible says to do it. And the Bible says, that, later on in the Bible, it says that that is a, that is a commandment with promise. The Bible describes that as a commandment with promise. I'm going to look at Exodus, the 20th chapter, and Deuteronomy, the 5th chapter. And those are my last two scriptures. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and the 12th verse. I knew you were in the, in the spirit. I knew you'd be able to follow me. Amen. I'm speaking to those helping me out with the video in the back, you all. Because God got me all over, but they're able to keep up. It says, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord is going to give you. Now, when, 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 when I read that, I, I, there are some parts of that that I kind of miss. And so we need to take a look at that in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5.16 rephrases the same thing, but adds to it. And when God says something, it's like him saying, verily, verily, I say unto you. It's, it's with emphasis. So it reads, honor your father and your mother as the Lord, your God, has what? Commanded, Commanded you. Why? That, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord is giving to you. That which the Lord is giving to you. So, so from this we see that, that God is, God, 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 it, it's a commandment. God didn't ask you to, whether you want to do it or not. God said that, hey, honor, honor, honor. As a matter of fact, that in the HCSB version of the Bible, the Holman Christian uh, Study Bible, that same verse, it says, so that you may live long, and so that you may prosper in the land that your God is giving you. So that you may prosper. How many of you all want to prosper? How many of you all want to be prosperous? Well, if you want to prosper, make certain you honor your father. You want to live long, make certain you honor your father or your mother. So that tells me that people that we see that's in their 80s and in their 90s, a uh, doctor, that means that they, they honor. Because the Bible says that, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, three scores plus 10. That's 70. So, so the saints that's in their 80s, huh? somebody did some extending of their lives. My dad is 88, and he came to the Lord in his 70s. So the Lord extended. Amen? Amen. So you want your life to be extended? Yes, Lord. Huh? You want to prosper? Yes, Lord. You want to prosper this morning? Let's stand to our feet. God is so good this morning. God is, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. I pray that you were blessed this morning. That's another one of my favorites, you all. Good, good father. See, the, the, it's hard to minister with them. I just love ministering with these guys because they know me. I remember when I was in the world and, and there were certain favorite songs that I had. And when the DJ played those, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you, you got out. <laughs> exactly. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all ain't like been saved all that life. <laughs> uh, leave me out there by myself. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, on this Father's Day. 
We thank you, Lord God, for being so good to us. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing. We thank you today, oh Lord God, because Father, we came, oh Lord God, to church, but we didn't know we were going to get blessed. We did not know, oh Lord God, that you were going to do a new thing, oh Lord God. That you were going to speak, oh Lord God, a word over our lives, Lord God. We didn't know today, Father God, what you were going to do, Lord God. And so, Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, that you have chosen to bless us, to give us a word, to change the trajectory of our lives. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessings that's decreed upon our lives, what it does is that it changes the trajectory of our lives. There were two black women that decided that, that, that were able to calculate, were able to calculate that the trajectory that, that, the, that the rockets should leave to get to the moon. And, and, and they did it using math, you all. They understood math. And I wondered who gave them the ability to understand. It was God. Nobody else on the earth. That's how you know it's God. So when God gives you solutions, and you're like, man, this is amazing. You know that it didn't come from you. Many times, God, God surprised me like that. This morning, I don't want to leave without me getting blessed. I got to get blessed also. And this brother, you all don't know that, he's from out of town, and he's a pastor, and he chose to come into this house. And one of the things that I've learned is that I'm going to always receive my blessing. So, sir, if you don't mind, you, Elder Nate, Pastor Greg, I need a blessing. Uh, I done blessed all the men. I don't have nothing left. You all got to do something for me. I'm not going to leave without my blessing. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like... <laughs> I'm not going to leave until you bless me. So I'm, I'm going to hold somebody's feet. But I'm not going to leave until I get blessed. 